Welcome to the table where a rice is being served. Only a very few varieties of a total of about 2,500. Who is serving them? Not a chef, but Canadian scientist Miros Kala. Steamed, fried, puffed, all kinds of them in the form of photographs and electron microscopy images with a side dish of explanation what they mean. The background of this title page is a photograph of arborio short-grained white rice, eminently suitable for a risotto. Consumers who like natural rice will recognize it in this slide. It is also called brown rice because of its color. During milling, it is the predecessor of the well-known and almost ubiquitous white rice. What is the difference between brown and white rice? Let's look at the diagram of the rice grain. When the inedible husk is removed, a grain of brown rice is obtained consisting of the starchy endosperm covered with bran and bran residues. The bran layer gives the brown color to the grains. Removal of the bran layers leaves the white endosperm, which is the substance of white rice. The embryo, that is the germ, shown in green color in the diagram, is also removed. Green arrows at the rice grains indicate from where the embryos have been removed. The re resulting white rice grain is almost pure rice starch. It is notable that unlike many other grains, rice doesn't contain gluten and is therefore gluten-free. Where are the microbes? I wish to see the microscope. Where are the microbes? I, I would like to see I the microscope. See them. Just a moment, please. Before the rice may be examined in an electron microscope, it has to be thoroughly prepared. Small fragments are mounted on metal stubs and then coated with gold. This treatment ensures that the beam of electrons inside the microscope produces excellent images. The samples in the microscope are manipulated by the microscopist to reveal the structures of interest. In this case, the interior of a rice grain. Cross sections of two different kinds of rice are shown. Arborio rice at left and brown rice at right. The micrographs are shown as the microscope has produced them, but the surroundings of the grain have been turned black. The grains are compact with tightly packed endosperm, that is, starch granules. A higher magnification and color enhancement reveal interesting features such as round starch granules with void spaces around them in the arboreal rice grain at left and a layer of bran on the surface of the brown rice grain. Two forms of starch granules are shown in this image in false colors. Round granules at left, which give the grain a white chalky appearance as they reflect light, and polyhedral particles at right. When tightly packed, they look like perfect rice with a translucent appearance. In the next micrograph at a higher magnification, Four grain cells with polyhedral starch particles meet diagonally inside a perfect arboreal rice grain. The starch in arboreal rice is particularly well organized in the form of polyhedrons with mostly pentagonal and hexagonal walls in contrast to oval starch granules in potatoes, shown at left, or wheat starch at right. Yet, the rice starch particles accommodate minute protein bodies, as seen in a fractured glutinous rice grain as right. On fracturing, protein bodies, which disengage from the starch particles, leave dimples in their surfaces. In many Asian countries, rice is consumed as parboiled or reformed rice rather than white rice. It is made from freshly harvested rice by boiling in the husks. A large part of vitamins such as thiamine, niacin, pantothenate and folate, and elements such as copper, selenium, manganese, magnesium, calcium, phosphorus, potassium, etc. are transferred from the brain into the endosperm. Parboiled rice does has about 80% of the nutrients present in brown rice. It cooks somewhat longer, up to 45 minutes, then white rice but American-style parboiled rice may be pre-cooked, 
and its cooking time may be similar to that of white rice. Boiling gelatinizes the starch and gives the purpled rice grain a glassy appearance. No structural details may be observed under an electron microscope. Some of the two and a half thousand rice varieties have characteristically colored seed coats, for example, the red rice at left or the Chinese black rice at right. This rice had not been grown for everyone to eat, but had been reserved only for the royalty and had been known as the forbidden rice. Nowadays it is easily available. Its seed coat has the highest concentration of so-called anthocyanins of all rice and even other grains such as quinoa. However, the interior of the black rice grain is white similar to the grains of brown and red rice, which have considerably less anthocyanins than the black rice. The long boiling times for the white rice, and even longer times for the brown rice, were a great disadvantage to attracting more consumers to rice in the United States. Please note the fragmented bran layers on the grains of the cooked brown rice. To make rice more desirable to the American consumers about a century ago, the Arkansas Rice Growers Cooperative Association sought the help of an unemployed American researcher of Afghan origin. Thanks to the financial support from the rice growers, Dr. Ataullah Durani shortened the time to cook white rice to 10, 8, even five minutes, and the General Foods Company purchased his patent in 1914. What is its principle? Pre-cooked rice is cooled, frozen, thawed, dried, and packaged. Freezing produces minute ice crystals in the rice. On thawing, they melt, and the resulting water evaporates during drying, leaving minute cavities and pores in the rice grains. They thus become porous, and they rehydrate easily, although they appear glassy and compact to a naked eye, as shown at left, electron microscopy shows how microporous they are at right. The fragment in the center shows porosity at a very low magnification. Every kind of rice should be consumed immediately after it has been cooked or steamed, or it should be cooled and stored in a refrigerator. Never keep it warm for several hours, as may happen to rice as part of a takeout order. Why? Because the spores of Bacillus cereus bacteria present in raw rice survive cooking and may germinate when the rice is kept warm and then multiply in the rice to cause food poisoning when it is consumed. Similar to popcorn, puffed rice is made from rice grains expanded quickly by the conversion of their moisture content into water vapor. The puffed grains seen at left have a foam-like internal structure consisting of small air cells as shown at right. When a grain expands by the developing steam, its seed coat breaks into small fragments like tiles, which float on the puffed grain. A detail of this structure obtained by scanning electron microscopy is shown below at left. Unlike popcorn, rice grains do not contain enough moisture, such as the corn grains, to be successfully popped at home. Rice is, therefore, processed in industrial settings at a high pressure with steam. A sudden release of the pressure ensures that the grains do not disintegrate, but they become fluffy. Rice flour is sometimes also called rice powder. It is made either from non-glutinous or glutinous rice. Both kinds of flour are shown here by scanning electron microscopy at the same magnification. The bars represent 200 micrometers or two-tenths of a millimeter. It would be difficult to identify individual starch granules in the flour because the flour is a mixture of the grain fragments. The much coarser non-glutinous rice flour is used to make cakes, pastries and noodles. The fine glutinous, sticky, sweet or waxy rice flour is used in deserts and dumplings and as a thickening ingredient in sauces. 
Rice flour in general binds water well in products that had first been frozen and then thawed. White rice grains have a high starch content, but pure starch, shown here, is very difficult to produce. In the past, rice starch was made by steeping the grains in lye to slowly dissolve the rice protein and to release the tightly packed starch granules. New technology is based on a high-pressure microfluidizer. The difficulty of producing pure starch is reflected in its high price. Only about 1% of starch on the global scale originates from rice, whereas 70% come from corn in North America, and large quantities of starch are produced from potatoes, tapioca and wheat elsewhere in the world. Rice bran has already been shown as the inner layer of the seed coat. It is a byproduct of rice milling in the form of small particles below 1.5 mm in diameter that is markedly smaller than flaky wheat and, particularly, the old bran, which has a visible part of the endosperm attached. In contrast, rice bran contains up to 12% of valuable rice oil with unsaturated fatty acids, which have beneficial properties on human lipid metabolism. On the other hand, it is susceptible to rancidity. Rice bran is seen by macrophotography as right in the form of small brown, often translucent particles. At left, details are shown by scanning electron microscopy, where the bar indicates 200 micrometers, that is, two-tenths of a millimeter. There are no signs of, of any starch accumulation in the rice bran. Black rice bran has a very high level of antioxidants, higher than many other foods, including blueberries. On the one hand, rice bran contains an elevated concentration of arsenic, and on the other hand, it contains vitamins B1, B6 and E, and a high proportion of dietary fiber. It is highly valued in Asia. In Canada, small quantities are available only online. In Asia, particularly China, Japan, Indonesia and the Philippines, some cooked rice is fermented with a yeast called Monascus purpureus. It gives the rice a pleasant flavor and a red color which may be used to tin pickled tofu, vinegar, many Chinese pastries and also the Peking duck. The fermented and then dried rice appears as dark red grains. Some fragments show light interiors, which means that the yeast have not yet reached the grain center. Scanning electron microscopy shows nicely developed crystals up to 100 micrometers long on the grain surfaces. The crystals consist of monacolin K, which is identical with lovastatin, that is, a medical substance from a large group of statins used to regulate lipid metabolism in humans. Commercial red yeast rice products which contain monacolin K are regulated in the United States as drugs. People who ferment their own rice with monascus purpureus and consume it in large quantities are at a risk of overdosing on statins if their doctors prescribe them without respect to the people's own natural source of statins. The Monascus purpureus fungus uses the cooked rice starch grains as a source of nutrients, which it partially digests and degrades to develop its hyphae. They are best seen at top left. The degradation of the starch particles is seen better at a higher magnification at right top, whereas the image at bottom left clearly shows rice grain cells separating from each other and acquiring a globular shape while the individual starch particles are also disintegrating. Electron microscopy has shown some interesting microstructures in rice, but it is not suitable to show one of the most interesting changes which may save the lives of millions of people. Rice is a staple food on the global scale in areas with lack of beta-carotene in the diet, which leads to a severe deficiency of vitamin A, resulting in blindness and death. Genetic modification has produced so-called golden rice 2, which, at a daily consumption of 75 grams, saves a child from blindness. In this global 
There is no vitamin A deficiency in the countries shown in green, and there are no reports from countries shown in light blue. However, a noticeable vitamin A deficiency is common in countries shown in orange. Severe clinical deficiency endangers people living in countries shown in red. The new Golden Rice 2 will provide energy and also prevention from blindness and premature death on a large scale. Rice is indeed an amazing food.